Hello, people of YouTube. I have a very interesting video for you guys today. I am going to be recording a video in which I am going to read the crazy things that are on Yahoo Answers right now. So, let me just pull that up. The first question, which is from two days ago, is My dog was attacked by two pit bulls tonight as we walked our nightly walk. Now I'm driven to push for a ban on pit, pit bulls, but how? Well, I can already tell how much of a shit show the comments are going to be on this one. Because... Just because one... Dog does something bad, and in this case two dogs, doesn't mean that the entire breed is terrible. Yes, there are... Varying... Accounts... Of pit bulls attacking other dogs, but there are also... There are also other kinds of dogs that have attacked other dogs, and you don't blame the entire breed. It's all about the owner and not about the breed. That's my opinion. You can come at me in the comments if you want to, but that's just what I think. I can already tell that the comments on this question are going to be an absolute shit show. Um. Yes, right here. First of all, screw you. Do everyone a favor and go research pit bulls. My pit bulls were attacked by a Rhodesian Ridgeback, and yet my vet, and my vet bill was much higher than yours. You don't see me wanting to ban Ridgebacks. All I know is, is that in my area of California, there's always pit bulls wandering around loose and being off the leash as well. I think they should be banned as well. So as you can tell, everyone has a different opinion, and yeah, that's kind of to be expected at this point. So I'm gonna go down further. And, oh, why is Rob Gronkowski such a creepy guy? No, Rob Gronkowski is not creepy. Rob Gronkowski is, like, an adorable, strange creature. And he is amazing. Not just because I'm from New England, but because he's fun. And he's funny. And he just enjoys life, and I think people who enjoy life are really fun people. Of course, the best answer chosen for this one is he plays for a creep and gets paid from a creep. So, I'm going to assume uh, Jets fans, because maybe, Indi maybe Indianapolis fans too. If a man works all day, is it too much to ask your lady to cook, clean, and do laundry? Okay, this, this is a hard question, because is your wife also working all day? If she's also working all day, you, sir, are an asshole if you expect her to do all of that too. You should share those responsibilities equally if you're both working all the time. If she is a stay-at-home wife or mom, then it's okay for her to be doing some cooking and some cleaning and some laundry because she's at home and if she has free time and she's not working from home and she's not spending her entire day taking care of all of your children and t that you've had together, then it's a good idea not to sit on your ass and do nothing because if the roles were reversed and she was working and you were at home, I would expect that you would be doing the same. Let's see what the answers are for this one. Well, if she's at home all day and you're at work, I see no problem. My mother is a nurse on call and when she's not in the clinic and works from six to four most days, sometimes longer, her husband stays at home most days and does cooking and cleaning and their laundry. Sometimes he's away for work and she does it all. Okay, that makes sense. This is an answer, by the way, not the poster. It depends if you have a kid because that's a full-time job. I'm a stay-at-home mom and my boy is active, so I'll clean for 10 minutes. So I'll clean, and then 10 minutes later, the place is a disaster. Running around with him all day takes a toll on me, but if you have no kids and you work all day, of course you have to cook and clean and do laundry, that's a part of the relationship. Also, communication is key. Instead of letting stuff accumulate, you have to talk about it. Not I'm not sure where this person got that part from, because he's not saying he's having any kind of issues with communication and arguments, but... Okay. Extra advice. Absolutely not. I work all day and I have my wife do way more than that. Sure, she can cook and clean and do the laundry, but that only takes a few hours. I have my wife wake up at 5am and chop wood even though we don't have a fireplace. You never know when you'll need wood. Okay. This is a troll. <laughs> I don't allow her to eat more than a handful of figs at a time. 
Who eat? No one eats figs. What the hell? Figs are disgusting, except for in Fig Newton form. I know it's technically my job, but she uses water and electricity on the three allotted days. Okay. Yeah. This guy's just looking for a reaction out of people. <laughs> okay, that's enough of the comments on that one. Do you feel the death penalty is ungodly and satanic? Okay. I personally am against the death penalty. Not because it's like, oh no, that's murder. No. I am against the death penalty because I would much prefer criminals rot in jail. And don't get on me about, like, costs more and shit, cuz... Have you ever seen how long these inmates are kept on death row for before they get killed? It costs more to do that than it does to keep them in a regular old jail. And yeah, I think it would be a lot worse if they were kept in solitary confinement in a maximum security prison than just being murdered. Couple of comments. Okay, forget religion and Satanism for a second. For example, an innocent person was murdered for no good reason, for the sake of, he of someone to have power and the desire to kill. Let's assume the victim had zero reason for death. Let's say many watched this pointless murder. The murderer should should be killed if it was clearly for no reason. If it was domestic murder, both parties had a history of violent behavior, one would question even the victim's role in the death. For murder, it is not usually pointless or has no meaning. People get mad and violent. It should not be held in random juries. Hand to say the person deserved death from lethal injection. It's a two-way street. Okay. So I guess they're pro-death penalty because they deserve death no matter what? <laughs> okay. No, I don't. When a, hu when a criminal commits a crime that is very severe, like rape, murder, etc., they are no longer a human being, and so should be not be treated as one. The death penalty should be a deterrent for crimes, but it doesn't seem to be one. Even if a criminal is given a death sentence, it takes years and years to actually carry the sentence out. There needs to be a deadline set for any death sentence to be carried out. The case usually takes a very lengthy time period to go through the court system, so if the death penalty is issued, any appeals process should be limited to something like five years to prove innocence. Even that's a really long time, wow. You people are pretty lenient. I'm gonna keep- you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go into the pregnancy and parenting section. Can parents forbid their kids from having fun? Like, their kids want to go to the park, and the parent doesn't always want to let them and the kids want to swim, but the parents tell them no, and the parents don't let the kids go on school field trips and not let their kids have friends or bring them over. Is that torture, or is it legal for parents to do that? Can a teacher do something to stop this? Well, I mean, that, in my opinion, that's sort of a kind of abuse and control and manipulation. But at the same time, that, that might not be, that might not be legal. Wait, no. That's not what I mean. It might not be illegal, but it shouldn't be legal. It is legal, but it's still messed up. Besides entertainment being psychologically healthy, the child might end up not having good social skills if they're not allowed to have friends. Those are not examples of abuse. Having fun isn't a basic right like food and shelter. Okay. No, it's not a right, but any good parent will make sure their child is able to have fun. Like, they have to be able to have a childhood, and one person says, that happens all the time, it's called being grounded. No, that is more than being grounded. If they never, ever, ever in their lives are allowed to have fun, there is something very messed up about that. Son stays unusually calm during punishment. My 14-year-old son stays eerily unusually calm during punishment. One example is yesterday, I was preventing him from going to the movies with his friends and banned him from electronics, and all he said was, oh, okay, sounds good. Not nonchalantly or sarcastic, almost like a almost horror movie. Like, do you think he honestly doesn't care or is something else going on? I think he didn't really want to go to the movie. <laughs> I mean, I think he, he's doing what I used to do and asking, hoping that you'd say no so he can be like, oh yeah, no, I, I was told I wasn't allowed to because I just really didn't want to hang out with these people. Okay, so the best answer is, I would be concerned about that. He is either stuffing his feelings, or he has given up expressing them, or he has come to see that home is an unsafe place and he's trying to survive, or some other likely troublesome emotional reasoning. Or perhaps he just knows it freaks you out. But either way, talk more and punish less. You need a connection in order to have any influence in the teen years. Okay. That makes sense. 
I do that. I'm 13, because if you just accept it, then normally you get less of a punishment. I'm good at shielding my emotions, so I just say sure or okay, mostly to either annoy my mom or get it over with, because I can't be bothered. It's true. Maybe he knows that arguing is just going to make the punishment worse, and he just wants it to be over with sooner. That's always a good option. Your son is smart. You are probably controlled by your anger and make poor parenting calls. You need to make things right with your son before it is too late. Set the rules, but if your son doesn't trust you due to dishonesty, then yeah, he won't be around long. Truth is powerful. Set it right while you can. It sounds like he's more mature than hand at handling punishment than the parent. Maybe. I mean... Maybe there's more to the story than what was being told, but... Either way, he is a pretty mature person, and yeah. So, this is just a test to see if I'm going to keep this segment going and have my friends joining in, and we'll, we'll all be reacting to it together. Um, so please, uh, if you want to see more of these videos, uh, like this one, comment, just... And if you do this, then... I'll know you want more, and it will become a regular thing, and it will be so much funnier when my friends are involved. So, yeah. If you want more videos like this, then like this one.